All right, so we're here with another video and I'm here with John again and we're doing a tier list. It's been a little while. I'm gonna do more videos in the future, but I kind of want to do more, uh, I guess, informative videos for people interested in studying physics. So I recently graduated, so that's pretty awesome. I'll have a little bit more free time now. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna make more videos. So this one is a top physics classes difficulty tier list. So the higher up, S tier is the most difficult, D will be the easier courses. We pick 10 here to talk about. And if you guys like this, then my friend John, who will be, he was obviously in the podcast, he'll do his video with engineering, which is what he has his degree in. Um, and we'll just kind of talk about it and kind of give people ideas if you're interested in studying physics or interested in studying engineering, what classes might be more difficult than others, um, what classes might be easier, at least from our experience. Yeah. So, and yeah. Then, and, and before we keep going, though, just just quick question, because I'm sure everyone is interested. I mean, how's it feel to be graduated? Feels pretty good. It feels good to be done with it. Um, now is kind of the awkward period where I'm finishing my applications for grad school and just waiting to hear back. So a lot of anxiety there, uh, but um, not bad, not bad. I actually did get accepted into a program the other day. So that Which relieves a what? lot of the stress. It was actually an engineering PhD program. Ooh, so switch into the dark side, huh? Maybe, maybe we'll see what offers come in, but it's nice to at least have one offer. Worst case scenario that, you know, a lot of people, some people don't get accepted anywhere they apply and that's obviously not ideal. So, uh, Thankfully, that won't be the case for me this, this go around at least. So, yeah, feels good. Feels good. All right, sweet. Well, let's get into this. All uh, right. Let, let, let's start off on, you know, left to right. Let's start off on that little top physics one. So what's the... Uh... Physics one, which is something we both can talk about because we took the exact same physics class. <laughs> oh, um, God. So it's kind of relative because... At the time of taking physics one, unquestionably S tier class in terms Absolutely. of the difficulty. But obviously now, granted that I've taken like the mechanics courses and everything, I would obviously, it would be very easy at this point. But at the time when I took physics one, it was very difficult for both of us. And I think it was difficult for a few reasons. Number one, it was a lot of new ideas that we weren't completely used to at the time of taking it. And uh, it was, um, I don't really know how to put it. John knows I mean, what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I was going to say, before we get any further, it's it's 100%. And it's not that, you know, and you'll hear about this a lot. The class itself wasn't, you know, really traditionally hard it's got some weird ideas that you go so how do i wrap my head, head around this but in general and it's a lot more relatable than it is to like a physics two where you, you go well so how do i even look at this but for physics one i know one of the things brian had an inc we had an incredible teacher didn't we <laughs> yeah very good and uh she she wasn't a bad teacher she was an incredibly she's a nice person. hearted one that she just she was the typical, um, you know, the, the teacher was, it was hard for her to be able to, to sometimes explain certain things because of the, the actual work itself was pretty confusing on its own. So trying to explain something like that to, for a first visit class was, yeah, I would agree during that time, S tier for sure. Now since we've seen it, it's like not too bad. There were two main issues as well that also contributed. Number one, I don't think I understood how to study for physics at the time. Um, and then number two, a lot of the problems we did in class weren't like elaborated on very well. So this, it's kind of hard because I feel like for most people, physics one will not be that bad of a class. But our experience was it was quite a difficult course. Incredibly hard. And like relative to where, it was honestly probably one of the hardest classes relative to like what I mean. Well, and also we, we did have member calc two at the same time, Correct. which also didn't help. So the workload and tension span definitely didn't. Um... Oh, where are we going? I caught there. I think B tier is fair because for okay. most people, this won't be that brutal of a course. 
Um, but it can be, if this is your first exposure to physics and you're still kind of getting used to physics, it could be pretty overwhelming in my opinion. So I think absolutely here is pretty fair. <laughs> Okay, okay. I like it. I mean, I absolutely agree. I would say it almost kind of, uh, it, you know, I don't know if we're, you want to go exactly comparing it to the other classes, but in general, you know, basis on time, it was absolutely incredibly hard and was probably one of the S tier. But, you know, after going through everything and understanding just like, you know, Newton's second law and such, you go, okay, now I'm getting it. And then like that, those are a lot, this one is a lot more personable than physics two, which is a lot more, you know, it, it, you know, you get down to a lot smaller pieces and you go, so how do we even look at this? Right. Okay. Right. So physics two is like you said, it's harder to visualize. Um, I think in some ways the setup is easier in physics two. Like the setup is at least I think more straightforward, but visualizing it is harder which i found difficult in physics too and so we had different physics two classes i was still at the same school and kind of got the same experience um, yeah i was like you have to explain a little bit about like explain the background of your teacher no one knows um, you know what he did he used to do before this so he had very high expectations yeah well in a way it's good because like it was useful in my later classes but um some of it was a little little much maybe and then also I think he was a type of professor that took a lot of pride in having difficult classes so I think he kind of enjoyed that in a way or he felt like I'll even this up a little bit he was making us appreciate physics a little bit more maybe which is fine but some some people definitely didn't need to take physics and i don't think they realized i know a lot of people that i used to always hear people go oh man i took it in high school and they go Woo, well you're in for a treat then because if you're doing calculus based even algebraic is incredibly hard it's just the the, the concepts are significantly not different, but significantly harder when you actually have to have real numbers rather than just straight visual if you had a certain professor these could easily go down to c or d tier 100 percent. physics one could go down to d for sure yeah and physics two c i think that's probably the way that most of pe most experience for people would go i'd honestly even um, argue physics two right now is at c because when if you think about it i mean this is you know you keep yours but in my opinion that physics c and i didn't do good in physics c in, in physics two i mean um funny enough but i absolutely you know i had you know you take it for the grain of salt you had a bunch of a lot more of a workload i had way more classes way more things that was appreciated and not only that but physics is important hugely important in uh engineering but at the same time i had actual engineering classes rather this is just a prereq to my new classes um, so right so i i wasn't too worried about me trying to oh getting you know an a plus in this i was always trying to figure out the other classes first rather right but right. you know you could even argue that it could even go down to c but you know we'll, we'll keep it there yeah so those are like your first two physics classes and some professors use them as weed out classes and uh like i said these are very professor i mean they're all kind of professor dependent to a certain extent but I feel physics one, physics two, especially, are very professor dependent. Like you could get a wide range of different professors. Um, I feel like Which with think PM, like, okay, you're probably going to be using Griffith. Like this will be pretty universal. Quantum, probably mostly. Uh, mechanics, probably mostly. Um, <coughs> but physics one and physics two, for some people, this will be D. Some people, this will be S. That's just how these go. There's a lot of different professors that teach them. There's not really one intro physics textbook that's used. Some people view them as a weed out class. Some don't see it that way. So it's very dependent. Uh, so I just wanted to say that about the intro classes. Modern physics. So again, I had a very good professor here. So this might influence my decision, but I thought modern physics was... Uh, Pretty easy. So, so what is modern physics compared to physics one and two? 
So modern physics is kind of almost a survey course. It's uh, going through a lot of the modern physics that uh, you might need to know for different classes. So we start off with special relativity and then we kind of get into the lead up for quantum and then we spend a lot of time in quantum mechanics. What are you uh, even learning special relativity? I mean, like I know, I mean, uh, I always hear it. It's pretty, so you start off with like um, the idea of an ether and the Michelson-Morley experiment and how it showed that there was no ether when, uh, and then you get into Einstein's uh, postulates, and then there's consequences of those that lead to things like time dilation, length contraction, um, the way you add velocities is weird, there's a relativistic Doppler effect, you get into things like the twin paradox, so it's a, you get into um, dynamics. So for example, uh, relativistic momentum and energy. That was essentially special relativity. That was a big part of the class. Then you get into things like the ultraviolet uh, catastrophe. You get into the photoelectric effect, Compton scattering, kind of the things that hinted at quantum. And then you do a big section on quantum mechanics. Um, and then after you do that, uh, I, I mean, we talked about atomic physics, we talked about nuclear physics, particle physics, condensed matter. Does uh, this modern physics, if you were to use, if say you didn't take the class, do you think it would, do you think it helped you with your other classes that you took later? Yeah, for this, sure. Okay, well, so, so this is an early class then, or is this a later class? Yes, this is a prereq for quantum mechanics. Okay. Um, now, I mean, I'll talk about quantum because quantum one, I felt like a large pot of, part of it was a review of modern physics in a way. So you probably honestly could have taken just quantum one. And if you took the time to go through it slowly, you would be fine. But having taken modern physics, it made the first part of quantum one pretty easy. Everything else is just kind of... Uh, you know, we cover a lot of topics, but you don't go into them deeply. It's just like a quick overview of different things. Um, so because of that, it doesn't get super deep. And this uh, is basically like overall though, it's, it's a pretty easy class, workload not hard. I mean, was the subject like kind of like when we go back up to like a physics one or two, you know, the subject, because you probably had some sort of familiarity with certain, you know, certain feet, you know, uh, say, say formulas and such, and the idea of how it all worked, but like, you know, for modern physics, would you say that like, you know, ton of workload was, was the, was any complicated, like, you know, to understand basis on what you were doing or was it, was it just directly pretty easy overall, yeah. not much workload and tests were not straightforward or. Tests were very straightforward. Um, the tests were very straightforward. The. I thought the assignments were pretty straightforward. They were interesting too. They weren't like boring. They were quite interesting. The math was very, very light. I think there were a little bit maybe with um, quantum mechanics with differential equations, but the math was very, very minimal. There wasn't really a lot of math in it. So if that's not something you're strong at, there's not a lot of that. It is a little conceptually... Uh, difficult to wrap your brain around for some of it uh, because it appears like there's some paradoxes so if you're not the best at like wrapping your mind around certain things it might be a little weird at times but all in all it was a pretty easy straightforward class maybe the easiest on my i think it is the easiest on my list maybe really okay oh. wow okay all right let's go to the next one Thermal and statistical mechanics. Um, so I would put these in C tier. I think that's fair. Uh, I did thermal the same semester I did modern physics, and thermal was harder than modern physics. Um, but it was still one of the easier courses. There was more math in it. There was a lot of Calc 3 stuff. Uh, it really wasn't even a lot of calc there was a lot of differentiation. Uh, statistical mechanics, if it was just statistical mechanics, that would be D tier. That actually was easier than modern physics. Um, but that again is not normally the case. 
uh, I had a very, very good and relaxing professor for statistical mechanics, which I know is not the norm for a lot of people. Statistical mechanics might be one of the harder classes, but for me, it was actually probably the easiest and thermal was probably a C tier in terms of difficulty. It wasn't incredibly difficult. It was pretty straightforward. Um, I don't think there's really a universal textbook for these classes, which make them also kind of dependent on who you have. Uh, but I, I, I like the textbook we use. I thought it was fine. I thought the exams were mostly pretty fair. I mean, they were definitely difficult at times. Um, How long was the class? Uh, which one? Uh, specifically thermal statistics or statistical or whatever you called it. Uh, so each one was a semester. No, no, no. Um, so was it like 50 minute classes or cause like, you know, oh, how yeah. long was the, the, my question then, cause I already know that like when I took some of my classes, that basis of how long it took was always kind of relative to how hard the problems can be. Because like, you know, if you had like one that was only, you know, say it's two days, um, or say compared to like three days, you do those 50 minute classes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Tests. I, I'm sure that you figured that out real quick. Those 50 minute tests are oh, so incredibly yes. stressful because it's always like it always goes off of like you know easiest to hardest but those hardest ones if you didn't finish the easy real quick to get those easy points you are screwed yeah so they were 55 minutes i think for both uh thermals was fair i don't think i ever ran out of time statistical mechanics was very uh it was much easier um, he gave a practice test, which was very, very, very similar to the actual test, coupled with the fact that it was nice. open book, open note. It was uh, very... It sounds unheard of. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he's a GOAT. The professor I had for that was an absolute GOAT. So because of that, the exam was very... Like, if you did the homework, you did the practice. When I say it was similar, I mean, like, it, it basically was so uh what, what, what were you learning though like i mean i hear thermal and statistics and i'm thinking of something that i kind of took but like it was two separate semesters but it was not at the same time it should have been it was like two classes in one that should have been separated but we had basically as the semester started prolonged half halfway basically or it's like a quarter because i think we actually learned another subject they actually switched finally you had like a test the first test was relative to that and then you basically took two more tests but they were all completely different subjects i mean were they hand in hand or was this like two separate they were similar especially with thermal so like in thermal, you go through stuff like the laws of thermodynamics, and that's like the first part of statistical mechanics. And then also in thermal, you talk about entropy, the second law of thermodynamics, and that's also covered pretty early on in StatMech. Um, there was some topics with probability in both thermal and stats, so that was pretty identical. I would say the big difference is in thermal, we did a lot more emphasis on things like heat engines um i remember that was a pretty big part uh, whereas with statistical me mechanics we talked about things like um equations of state and we talked about things like uh identical particles so like bosons and bosons and fermions and stuff like that we also talked about uh the maxwell distribution which was talked about a little in thermal as well. So they were pretty similar. Um, there was definitely, there, there really wasn't a lot of quantum mechanics in thermal physics. I think they kind of operated on the assumption that you didn't know quantum, but with statistical mechanics, they assumed you kind of knew a little bit of quantum. So there was some quantum mechanics in it. Did um, you need this class to, to do any of these other classes or was this kind of like its own separate thing? So thermal was a prereq for statistical mechanics. And I think maybe statistical mechanics is a prereq for solid state. Um, I'm not sure if that's entirely true. Um, but yeah, you basically had to take thermal and then you did statistical mechanics. Got it. And I think quantum was a prereq for statistical mechanics. Well, perfect. Jeez. A hey, Mac one, Mac two. 
also pretty easy. Uh, they're one of the easier upper level courses. Uh, I'll go ahead and put it in C tier. Um, between C tier and D tier, I could switch, but the Is only arguably thing... one of your favorite classes? I feel like Mech, I always used to think in my head that like you used to really like. Yeah, I did. The only part that was really weird for me in all the mechanics that I did was chapter nine out of John Taylor's uh, textbook, which was stuff like the centrifugal force, the Coriolis force. I found those pretty difficult. Um, I mean, I think I kind of got the hang of it by the end of it, but most of it was very simple. Mechanics one is a D tier in terms of difficulty. Mechanics one was basically physics one, just a little more rigorous. And that's part of the reason I'm kind of happy that physics one was a difficult course for me because it made mech one easier. Um, honestly, most of the semester was not anything new, maybe a little bit more detailed, maybe a few things here and there, but until we got to the cap to calculus of variations in the Lagrangian, it was all stuff that I've seen before. Um, mech two was definitely a little harder than mech one, but I had a really good professor, um, I thought the problems for the most part made sense to me. I will say the exams in MEC 2 were hard given the time constraint of like 55 minutes. Um, I don't think I finished the first two exams. I'm pretty sure the first exam, I didn't do one part of one question. And the second <laughs> exam, I did half of one problem and like one part of the last one, I completely ran out of time. And that was the one with, um, so normal modes was covered in that section. And normal modes, anyone that's ever done it will tell you that there's a lot of algebra in it. So a lot of times you have to solve an eigen equation and you need to find your um, eigenvalues which so this problem was incredibly messy because you uh, you had something times omega squared plus something times omega plus a constant equal to zero, blah, blah, blah. And you had to do like a quadratic and it was all messy. And I just remember it taking up so much time. Um, but I think that was part of the reason that I, like I knew how to do it. It was just so time consuming that it was pretty difficult. And then the third question was a Coriolis force one, which is also kind of difficult. Um, Mech one was much, much easier. Um, pretty straightforward. I thought the exams were very fair. I thought both exams were fair. I just wish I had a little bit more time in the Mech two exams, but can't really complain. I, I liked both classes. You know, what's so funny is, it, you know, thinking about when you said, man, like, I don't even think I finished, you know, some of the full questions for all the parts on, you know, you're this test. It, you know, I was going back and kind of thinking in my head, like, man, you know, it, you know, school for, you know, specifically in physics and ME and any of these ones is like a really toxic relationship, right? Like it's, you, you lose all hope and you, know, you get to these big arguments where you're just like, well, I don't, why am I doing this? And at the end, you actually finally come back and somehow get through it. And it's like, a, it's, it's an endurance race, man. It's a, it it's a marathon, definitely not a sprint. Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> um, but it, it was good. I mean, I think I paced myself well with both classes. Um, I, I, I was pretty happy with both, honestly. I really like the Taylor textbook. And these are the first classes. I know not every school uses Taylor, but I think that's the most common one, uh, at least for undergrad. So... That's the other thing is a textbook that you read will likely be the same one I read. Um, and you'll likely cover the same topics. I mean, the professor can obviously make things more difficult or uh, less difficult, but at least you know the material, the textbook material will be exactly what I'm talking. And the textbook I thought was really good. I like the textbook. All right. Well, it seems like um, now, it seems like now, right now, this is like, 
this the moment now where you start to transition into like it kind of like I think of like ooh I'm learning some really cool stuff now E and M E M one and two. Okay, this one's pretty easy. That's S tier. <laughs> These classes are pretty difficult. Um, they're honestly both difficult too. Like Mac two was kind of difficult. Like that could be B tier, but because Mac one was D tier, I'm like okay, C tier. That's kind of how I thought about it. For EM1 and EM2, they're both probably, even if I did them individually, they're both either like A or S tier. What's the difference between the two? Basically, in EM1, the charges aren't uh, moving. They're stationary. EM2, your charges start moving and things get kind of crazy. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Um, yeah, so EM1 was all like electrostatics. It's the first chapter, and this is, again, Griffith's uh, Electrodynamics. That's the book everyone uses i don't think any institution i'm sure there is but almost every school uses griffiths um which it's a fine book but some of the problems are pretty difficult out of there um and it also suffers from the same problem in physics too as being more difficult to visualize in a lot of way it's also very math heavy so uh mac one not really super math heavy. Like you can take, I mean, there were a couple differential equations you need to solve. MEC2 had some linear algebra, nothing crazy. Um, EM1, EM2, definitely more math heavy. So if math is a weakness, these will definitely be hard. Uh, vector calculus is very important. Um, there's differential equations in here. There's, there's a lot. Uh, so the math is hard. Conceptually, it's definitely not the easiest. And it's just dense. So, I mean, one good thing about the book is the first chapter is a whole math review. So that is kind of helpful. Um, chapter two, I'm kind of going off memory, but I believe that was basically the electric field. And Gauss's law. Um, Gauss's law, charge distributions. Three, I believe, was electric potential. I remember that getting a little difficult, and uh, especially boundary condition problems. So that actually was partial differential equations and solving boundary problems. That was pretty difficult. Then you get into electric uh, fields and matter, which was also difficult. Uh, chapter five was magnetism, which I think was fine. But then chapter six was magnetism and matter, which was again brutal. Um, so for me, when I did EM1, I think like 60% of our grade was based on like two exams. Um, and they were hard. Yeah. <laughs> they were pretty hard. The quizzes were fair. The homeworks were definitely fair. Um, I thought exam one was pretty fair. I remember I did pretty well in exam one. Exam two was very difficult. Now, I don't know if it's because I was studying for other classes or what, but I remember, and also the exam was at 7 a.m., so that also probably made it difficult, but EM1 was pretty difficult. And then how was the teacher? He was, he was a nice guy. He was good, and he was very good at explaining stuff. He was, uh, I think, younger. I think maybe didn't quite realize that we weren't as smart as he thought we were. Um, but I, I thought he was a good professor. I, I didn't really have any issues with the professor. Um, and then with Ian too, uh, like I said, that kind of gets into things like uh, chapter seven. What was chapter seven? I remember Ohm's law being in there. I believe eight was like conservation laws, like conservation of momentum. Um, I remember, I believe it was chapter nine, which is chapter nine is the worst out of all of EM when you get there, which is the wave questions and light and reflection and reflect refraction and oblique incidents. Those were terrible wave guides. That was one of the worst sections in all of physics by far. So hard. They're brutal. I mean, I don't even know how to Why? explain how it was so bad. It was. It would be like, um, 
I is it just super map heavy or problem. super hard? Is con- I mean, is it is it just something that's super hard to concept or like what well, what's the? Um, it just gets messy. And uh, an example would be like uh, if you have a barrier. So let's say you have an electromagnetic wave. It hits the barrier. Some of it reflects. Some of it goes through. And then that hits the other end of the barrier. Some of that reflects, some of it goes through. So then you have like two waves inside this barrier interfering with each other. And then sometimes they have it hit at an angle, which makes it more difficult. Um, it gets kind of messy. And I remember a homework problem we had where the waves just constantly bat, uh, bounced off of the barrier. And it got... It was very confusing. And I remember that being one of the harder homeworks that uh, I ever had. Um, So that was pretty bad. The good thing is after that, it does get easy. You get into potentials and radiation. And I thought those were a lot easier. And then special relativity. So it did get easier after chapter nine. But chapter nine was so bad. The other chapters were fine. Like if you omitted chapter nine, EM2 would still be difficult, but it would be more like a B tier class. Oh, wow. Um, so that's huge then. That's yeah. Chapter job. nine was the worst chapter in the entire book. And I would go a step farther and say it was the worst chapter out of any book that I've ever read. I, I, I It's not even like I have to sit and think about it. It definitely was. So they're both on their own S tier. Jeez, <sighs> that that was that that brought back. I, some I feel like you're getting PTSD right now. Yeah, I was about to say that brought back some, back some memories. Um, <laughs> okay, all right, and, and then uh, hopefully not it's taking, not too bad now. Uh, well, it actually just keeps going. <laughs> okay, never mind. Like quantum one and quantum two. Um, before you before you grab the tier, yeah. I mean. I think quantum sounds harder than EM. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie to you because I know you know particles when they start to get real small. I've noticed this, you know obviously EM is the same way, but I've always thought quantum would be a lot harder. Not just because the name sounds even cooler, but like I mean, how much you know we're talking about difficulty before you get into two specifics. How much of harder or easier is this than EM? They're pretty comparable. Okay. Um... I think EM is a little harder, but I'll I have to think about it. I have to convince myself because I honestly don't know yet. Okay. In terms of the math, um, this is the most linear algebra heavy class by far. Um, out of all of them, and it's not like you take linear and it's the same idea. But like the notation they use, it's just weird how they did it. So I remember being like, okay, I get it. this is an eigen equation. These are our eigenvalues and our eigenstates. And then it was like, it took me a little while to kind of see like, okay, I, I get what they're saying. I, I get this is essentially this. But it was it was a little weird at first. Um, in addition, there's a lot of uh, math with complex numbers. And I believe there was complex integration in quantum two at one point. So there's that. Um, there's Fourier transforms. So that's another one. Um, obviously, the Schrodinger equation is a PDE. So that comes back. There's some differential equations. I remember for, I believe it was the harmonic oscillator. To solve the Schrodinger equation, you had to use a power series solution, which was pretty brutal. Um, there's commutators, which is a little weird. Uh, you obviously have to be able to work with the Hamiltonian represented as a matrix. Honestly, like that, now that I'm thinking about it, I think quantum is the most math heavy out of any of the classes, even more so than EM. Um, yeah, it is. It for sure is. Conceptually, it's even more difficult than EM, though. Um, EM, you can kind of understand, like, oh, these are the fields, the electric field, the magnetic field. With quantum, it's much harder to really intuitively understand what's going on. 
What I will say is modern physics prepares you pretty well for quantum one because the first two chapters you essentially already know. It's just the Schrodinger equation, one dimension uh, for like a free particle, infinite square well, harmonic oscillator, uh, barriers, so I remember the first exam actually being kind of easy in quantum. Um, then chapter three, it hits you with the, I guess, the linear algebra and some of the weird stuff they don't really teach you in linear classes. Um, some of it they do, like the inner product and stuff like that. Uh, so, I mean, how, I mean, so now then you kind of get into linear and you're talking about it. How hard was, or no, or how advanced do you have to know in terms of linear? Like, I mean, do you have to take like linear one and two for this? Or is this like a, no. is it pretty easy? No, you probably, you wouldn't need a whole linear class. I would say you wouldn't even need a whole linear one class. You would just need to know certain things. Um, there are points where knowing like theorems in linear algebra was useful. But if you kind of know how to work with the matrix, you understand how to solve eigen equations, you understand how the inner product works change of bases, stuff like that, you're probably, for, oh, in vector spaces, because you work in Hilbert spaces, which is, I guess, like a vector space. Um, by far the most linear heavy class, probably, and also considering the complex stuff, uh, the Fourier transforms, the PDE, this is probably the most math heavy class. Um, what I will say though, is if you know the math, at least in my experience when I took the exams. So we had three hours for the exams, which was a lot nicer. Wow. How many questions? There, uh, like four or five. Uh, oh, I should mention. So I'll finish talking about quantum one. Uh, you talk about the hydrogen atom, which is, again, kind of stuff you talked in modern about, but more detailed. And you talk about... Um, identical particles. And then in quantum two, which was harder than quantum one, you talk about conservation laws. That was pretty easy. Perturbation theory, time-dependent perturbation theory. Um, you talk about quantum dynamics. You talk about scattering. You talk about WKB approximate. You talk about all that different stuff. And what I will say is for quantum two, the cutoff for an A was... A 95 so if the cutoff was like an 85 i don't think quantum 2 would have been that bad but a 95a like that really puts your feet to the you really don't have a lot of room for error um so i think that made quantum 2 feel harder than it was um so in my experience, I would put quantum two in S tier and then quantum one in B tier. So I'm kind of leaning to put them in A tier. Wow, that's a huge um, jump. That's a huge difference between the two. Yes. Well, in part, for quantum one, an 85 was an A, which is a lot more relaxed. Um, for quantum two, a 95A is pretty hard to do. Like a 95, to get a 95 in a class, you can't really make a lot of mistakes. And on top of that, in quantum two, we had homework due every single class period. So you really had to do a lot of quantum. Like, I wouldn't take quantum two with another like heavy physics course. Um, I think I'll compromise and put them at A. I think that's kind of the middle ground road. So definitely, I mean, now since you have now, I already know the next class, I'm not going to even say anything more. But I mean, in terms now of your difficulty level, would you say that like, by far, e, um, e and M one and two are for sure the hardest out of everything that you've probably taken in physics? No, I could probably be swayed that quantum one and two is harder than EM one and two. Okay. Those two are definitely like, far above the others in terms of just like, objective difficulty and also personal experience like how the grading was in terms of the cutoff stuff like that so i could be swayed i just feel like right now a tier is fair
circuits. So this shouldn't be a hard class. This should probably be like, it is a time consuming class. This was a very, very time consuming class. I think everyone kind of agreed with that. You had to spend like 20 hours a week studying for this single class. Um, and maybe I just didn't give it enough time, but I am not a very big fan of electronics and circuits. I hope one day this love of circuits will come to me, but right now, so let's go B or A. I was going to say, so I remember. It's not in the same realm as quantum. <laughs> quantum was definitely harder. I have never heard it. Like, it's like out of every single time that I've ever heard you talk about it, uh, you know, specifically difficulty in terms of class just frustration i think circuits was the oh top. i think by far so much just because you knew the positions of just crazy things that were happening and you're like and and, and it doesn't seem like it was really the actual class because i remember last time you'd ask me on certain things and I'd go, yeah, I know, I know it's, it's, you know, cause I took the, I took this class also. And I remember because you kept saying, oh man, and it's the lab or it was some sort of issue with the teacher. And it was yeah, because... well, you have a lot of troubleshooting you have to do. That's also frustrating with circuits is you don't always know what you did wrong. Do you yeah. mean like the lab or the actual class? Like if you're building a circuit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And you're not getting the results you're expecting. So you kind of need the intuition on what it is you expect to get. And then you need to construct the circuit that gives you what you want. And if you don't get what you want, you need to figure out why that's the case. And this was another one that had like a 94 as an A. Um, I don't know, maybe like, I'm not much of an experimentalist, but in terms of classes I dislike the most, this would be S tier. 100%. I would <laughs> probably rather take EM. I'd rather take like a quantum. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I would take circuits because I need to improve on it. But this was uh, and honestly, in terms of like my upper level physics class, this was one of my lower grades. It actually was my lowest grade. So like maybe that justifies moving it up. But I feel like switches was one of the things that I remember you not liking. I didn't like most of it. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I did not like, that was my least enjoyable class in terms. If this was most enjoyable physics classes, this would be D tier and there's no, nothing else that would uh, surpass it. I didn't find it very exciting. I guess some of it was kind of cool. I didn't like messing with circuits. I didn't like the chairs in the lab. I didn't like not really getting what's going on and trying to understand why it wasn't working. Uh, there were so many times we'd have to write eight page lab reports that took so much time out of the day. A lot of times if you didn't finish your lab, you had to come in at weird hours to work through them. It was not enjoyable. I don't feel like it was supposed to be very difficult but uh it definitely wasn't enjoyable i'll just i'll leave it there for circuits i'm not gonna Maybe. lie though i, I you know I, it's kind of crazy and it seems strange but i also very similarly had a huge issue i did really good in it not a lot of people did especially if you were depending on what major if you were a computer science major you didn't have to take the lab but you had to get a C to pass the class and go to your next computer science. Don't ask why. I don't know why that works like that. But for an ME, it was the absolute opposite. So if you – because you were ME, you had to take the actual lab, but you had to pass it with a C- minus, or you know, just basically pass is what the ultimate goal is. Um, but it's funny because I know a lot, and one of my – me and my buddies took it. And a lot of them did not pass it funny enough. So what I did the guy say when he turned in his exam? Um, so, oh yeah, he, I, this was, yeah, I remember this, this was actually during the final and, uh, he, so we had a teacher and the teacher was kind of a, he was, he was a strange fella, but he was a nice guy. He definitely was a lot, um, nicer than I expected, but he, um, we had some little conflicting interest between the, the, the class and him. 
on something he did a while back and i remember it messed up a lot of people like i knew one guy who was just absolutely brilliant and he got like a zero on the test is that when he like, curved it, off of the bell yep curve? and some guy the one of the guys walked up and this was on the final probably 15 minutes in he grabs it uh, he grabs his paper sits down within like five to ten minutes grabs the paper puts it on the guy's the teacher's desk and said i'll see you next year and then <laughs> <laughs> and then went over there and just left and we all looked at each other giggled and then went back to it and you know it was a they had like what was it six different tas walking around the class was um very hot and sweaty you're like sitting you know you might as well be holding hands next to it, it was it was an all around not the you know best not the most ideal decision to be in but you had to get through it but we did it so now i do have like an electronics book that i got now and I've been reading through at least the beginning of it. And it's a lot more interesting as I'm like reading through the book, kind of understanding conceptually what's going on. Um, I also kind of have to do circuits with the research that I'm doing. So it's gotten a little bit better. Uh, I don't know. Maybe my opinion on circuits will change, but I remember taking the course. Honestly, the only reason this isn't higher up is because I don't think that will be the case for most people. I feel most people will think it's a B level course. It's very time consuming. It's not enjoyable. Yeah, I'll just leave it there. <laughs> um, okay, computational physics. This probably goes into D tier. It wasn't very difficult. Um, I really like this class. I liked it because there is a lot of stuff that goes into it. And if you wanted to explore that realm, you could, but it's not like the professor made you become, uh, he didn't make you ask these super deep questions uh, about it. Um, I really liked it. I thought it was fun. I did this my last semester and the book, Computational Astrophysics, I have it somewhere. Uh, it's awesome because so many of the physics problems you probably did and physics one or uh, thermal physics or quantum mechanics you can do it in python now so a lot of these problems like a projectile motion problem you do that in physics one obviously and to work it out in python it's like oh yeah i see that was like an early example um so i really liked it i liked working the projects i feel this is incredibly useful for research for workforce um I think it was like a 90A, completely fair. He graded very, very leniently, very, very fairly. Um, he was a very nice professor, very helpful. Uh, I like that he uploaded his lectures. That was really cool. I felt like I learned a lot. I feel a lot. I feel I went into the class like not comfortable at all with Python. In fact, I remember he gave like uh, the first day a PDF. He's like, if you can do this, then you'll be fine in this class. I was able to do it, but I think he meant like, if you can do this like in 15 minutes on your own, then you're fine. And I had to like Google everything. Um, I actually thought like, man, maybe like this is a sign, but after doing it, it, uh, like after doing the class, I feel way more confident with Python. I feel like I could at least have an idea of how to write a script if I needed to. It's helpful in research. It's helpful everywhere. So um, it's just like Python, using Python for physics? Essentially. Like the answer. Okay. We did some stuff with the Linux and we did stuff with GitHub. So we got familiarized with that. And the most of it was uh, coding in Python, uploading it, uh, saving it as a um, essentially a file in LaTeX, and then uh, uploading it to GitHub where he grades it. So... Yeah, it, it was it was a very easy class. It was straightforward. It was fun. It's kind of there with modern. It's actually probably even easier than modern. Um, because a lot of the projects and homework, it's not like there's even exams where you're not really sure what he's going to ask. The most he'll give you is like a project, but you have like weeks to work on it. So you're not being surprised either. So I like the class. It was one of my favorite classes that I ever took. So then would you say then by far easiest, no problem? 
Probably, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. Pro Stat mech was pretty easy, honestly. Uh -huh. That actually might be even easier. Um, but, yeah. It, it was a very easy class regardless. And advanced physics lab. So, now that I'm looking at this, I'm going to move circuits to A tier. And I'm going to move advanced lab to its place in B tier. Okay, because, so why do we do this move? Well, advanced lab, I think, definitely belongs in B tier. It's a time-consuming class. It's difficult at times, but it's definitely better than circuits. But at the same time, I don't feel like circuits belongs in the quantum mechanics tier. So I don't know. Maybe I'll, I don't know. Um, advanced lab. So essentially you do what we did is we had a list of like 15 different experiments that we toured like the first day. And from that, you pick, you rank how you felt about each one. And then they assign you four labs to do throughout the semester. So you go through and you do labs based on physics and you write these lab reports up in LaTeX and then you submit those. And there's some like homework assignments. There's some lab preps. But it's a very hands-on, obviously, it's a lab class. Um, so, for example, my experiments was a low-temperature transport lab, which boiled down to low temperatures, seeing how that affects the resistivity of copper. I did x-ray diffraction and absorption, essentially, kind of how it sounds. You're reflecting radiation waves. You're moving a detector around and then seeing the count. Um, HCL rotation, so basically scanning in HCL, HCL molecules and kind of looking at the quantum properties of it, and then saturation absorption, which is kind of like an optics lab with a laser, um, but the laser was hitting rubidium, which would cause uh, an emission or an absorption of a photon, which then we could um, record. So basically uh, experimentally showing effects of quantum mechanics. So it's, it's much funner than circuits for sure. Much more interesting. I don't think it's as time consuming. There was some statistical homework assignments, which were very time consuming. Uh, but if you stayed on top of your lab report, I don't remember ever really having to rest the lab reports here like I did with circuits. I always remember circuits like that took a lot more time, whereas uh, the lab class, I don't remember having to rush it as much. You know, I'm not going to lie. I think every single time that I've taken a lab, it was awful. I'm just going to flat say it there unless, I mean, I, I think you would probably agree with me the most part. Every single one was so yeah. much, I mean, and it wasn't that it was difficult. It was the work because I know that the amount of, people being so strict um, especially a lot of the teachers and a lot of the stuff was such an absolute pain because if you basically didn't do it a certain way like you know one of the things they always explain is obviously I mean it makes sense right but you know sometimes you don't really know because you you know this can take you four hours to do uh, write a lab up mm -hmm. and not only that but then you go back and you have problems with your your graphs too it's I always ran into issues there's always that yeah for sure I can't really complain. Like I thought the professors were pretty solid here. Um, and there was a very nice grading curve for it. So you felt like you had freedom to uh, experiment literally uh, with stuff. Um, but no, that does happen. Like sometimes your data is bad. So then you have to redo it. Uh, I don't remember ever. Well, I, there was one time I had to come in on my free time to work on a lab. But most of the time, the labs were done within the lab period and that really wasn't an issue i remember with circuits there were there was many times i had to go in late and work on the circuit we were trying to construct i don't remember that really happening with the advanced lab course um and like i said it was way more interesting the grading curve was pretty fair um it actually it was time consuming though, so I don't know if I can drop it down to C. 
Yeah, I was like, I don't Cause... think it was difficulty level, maybe not completely there, but that workload, holy. I think that's what made it so difficult. So if you want to make it technical, then yeah. And the but... other thing is you could go from doing like uh, something that's very quantum heavy to doing something that's not quantum. Like there's a lot of variations depending on the lab you get. And sometimes some labs work better with others. Some have other issues. Some of that are, is the apparatus. Like there's a lot that can influence this, but I, for the most part, enjoyed the uh, lab courses. So I think that's a fair place to put it. B. I don't think it's so easy that C tier is fair. I think this is a decent, decent. Uh, it's a decent roadmap for what you might expect with some of your physics courses. Yeah, and, and, and I would argue again, which I think is going to be for almost 90% of all classes, that if you have a really good like teacher or lab professor, it makes it so much easier because I know like one of them, and I remember telling you about this, Brian, um, you know, one of the big things was like I have seen people that they come over there and they say, you know, just because just this is not normal, but just sometimes. Um, he said, like, you know, in the beginning of, like, one of the labs, he said, you know, hey, I know that you, this is going to be a little interesting. It's going to be hard. It's going to be a lot of work. But just so you guys know, if you guys can beat me in chess, <laughs> I will give you an A for the, for the whole entire uh, semester. And then you didn't have to show up. And I guess some people have actually tried, or I think it was um, it was chess and it was FIFA. If you can beat him at one of the two, he'll give you an A, and you don't have to show up for the rest of the semester. Which wow. is pretty funny. Which meant yes, he had a lot of confidence. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it depends on the professor. I mean, a lot of these could be switched around. This could definitely be higher up. These could definitely be lower down. I think EM and quantum, like there's, even if you had a really good professor, I still feel like these will be one of the harder classes you take. I feel like these are pretty professor independent. But I could see your physics labs changing. I could see your thermal classes changing. I feel like modern is in general pretty easy. Comp physics could be harder. Mac could be harder. Um, but yeah, with the exception of these two, I don't know. I think the professors could vary all these others pretty heavily. It's really just these core classes, which regardless of how well intended or good your professor is it's going to be kind of brutal so yeah that's that's kind of what i think about it um i mean i think we'll definitely do another one later with uh you and yep. your engineering ones yeah i was like i don't mind putting out there and put some engineering classes out there something to keep your head out i know that the i don't know if you guys some people have heard about uh the three horsemen that they used to always say especially as an engineers specifically mechanical which is dynamics it's thermodynamics and the fluid dynamics it's they go quite a quite um a big difficulty between dynamics to thermo and <laughs> it's funny because you, you kind of get like a big incentive when you first start and you're like ah oh, statics ah oh, dynamics this is awesome incredible teachers you know all this stuff and then you start learning the hard classes thermal um you know systems control oh you learn all these different things and then it's like oh okay we're we're actually uh, in engineering classes now okay and it, and it changes real quick yeah so hopefully if this video goes good we'll do one for that Perfect. So, I yeah. Blend it Thank, off. You guys. Thank you guys for watching. And if you wouldn't mind giving a like and subscription, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys.